how limited is the Galaxy Watch 4 or 4 Classic when connected to a non-Samsung Android device? That's what we're going to find out in today's video. The good news is that you get the vast majority of Galaxy Watch 4 features when connected to a non-Samsung phone compared to a Samsung phone, including things like Samsung Pay, Bixby, all the Samsung Health Workouts, and even the Galaxy Buds controller if you have a pair of Galaxy Buds connected to your non-Samsung Android phone. Because of that, I'm just going to cover everything that you don't get when connected to a non-Samsung Android device, and you can just assume that all the other features are available. Also remember that some of these missing features may be added with a future update, but don't expect that to happen anytime soon. And if you want to see a deep dive on all the features that the Galaxy Watch 4 has to offer, you can check out my other deep dive Galaxy Watch 4 videos that are linked at the end of this video and in the description. And speaking of the description, there are also time codes down there to help you find the things you care most about. And if you appreciate video time codes, let me know by dropping a like down below. The first thing I want to talk about are the missing applications, and there are two of them. So if you swipe up to reveal all of your applications and you scroll down, one of the first things you'll notice is that there is no messaging application installed. And that's a pretty big problem because without a messaging application, you can't reply to messages from your watch. Fortunately, there is a messaging application that you can download, and it's Google's own messaging application. So if you open up the Play Store app, tap the search icon, tap the keyboard, then type in messages. That'll bring up Google Messages right here, just called Messages. Tap that, and tap Install. Once it's installed, you'll be able to not only reply to messages that come in, but you'll also be able to start new messages right from your watch. And one important thing to point out about this is this Messenger app only works if your default Messenger on your phone is the Google Messages app, which is the case with most non-Samsung Android phones anyway. Compared to the Messages app that you get when connected to a Samsung device, there are two limitations. You don't get the option to send an audio message, and you also don't get the option to quickly open the message on your phone. Other than that, you get all the same messaging features. Also, since the built-in keyboard option is just T9 text, which is really hard to use and just takes a long time to send any message at all, I highly recommend that you also download the Gboard keyboard application. To install this, go back to the Play Store, tap the search icon again, and search for Gboard. Now just tap Gboard and install that. Once it's installed, you need to set it as the default keyboard. So let's go back to the watch face. Swipe up to see all of your applications and tap the Settings app. Then scroll down until you find General and tap that. Then scroll down a bit more and tap Input. Then tap Keyboard List and Default. Then tap Default Keyboard and switch that to Gboard. Now if I go back into the Messages app and open up the keyboard, I get a full QWERTY style keyboard which makes it way easier to type. The only other missing application is a camera control application. Fortunately, I did find an excellent camera application that offers tons of features to control your camera right from your wrist. Let's go back to the Play Store, tap search again, and this time you're going to search for Camera 1. Now we're going to go ahead and select and install this application. Once installed, just open the application, and there's the preview of my Pixel 5's camera. So it's currently in portrait mode, but if I just tilt my camera, it'll switch to landscape mode. And then I can just tap to take a picture or tap to start recording a video. And then when I'm done recording, I can either pause the video and then start recording again later, or I could stop the video. If you pay just $2 for the premium version of the application, you get a ton more features. If I swipe up, I can actually switch which camera is being used. So if I pick up the phone here, you'll see that I'm now using the front facing camera and I'm going to keep using the front facing camera for now just so you can see the icons a little bit better. You get a power saving option which turns off the preview and it turns the buttons into just circles. You can take a photo with a timer. You get the same video and picture options. This speaker icon makes all the audio that's recorded with the phone actually play in the watch's speakers. If you tap the three dots, you get the options to change a bunch of different settings, including the layout of the interface, the picture size, the video type, and this does change based on which camera you're using. So right now I'm using the front camera, which is only capable of full HD recording. But if I go back and switch to the rear cameras, come back into the settings, then you can see that I now get the option to film in 4K. And if I scroll all the way down, I can even start time lapses and high speed video. Back in the settings, I can also adjust how long the timer runs for. I can change the favorite button function, 
And I can even change the back button action to do things like take a photo, start or continue video or audio recording, and even start or cancel the self timer. Now let's take a look at some of the missing features within some of the applications. Let's start with Samsung Health. Fortunately, you do get the daily activity tracker, the steps tracker, all of the exercise that you can track when connected to a Samsung device. You can also track when connected to a non-Samsung Android device. You get sleep monitoring, heart rate measurements, stress measurements, blood oxygen measurements, even body composition measurements. You can also add food and water intake. You can compete with other people. And these competitions are to see who is exercising more. And if you're actively in a competition with somebody, it'll show you who's in the lead. And for all the ladies out there, you can also track your cycle. Unfortunately, you are still missing two features, the ability to measure an ECG and the ability to measure your blood pressure. Those two features aren't available because you need to have the Samsung Health Monitor app, which is currently an exclusive to Samsung devices. I tried sideloading the APK on my Pixel 5, but that would just result in the app crashing before being able to set anything up. Fortunately, there is a way to get the ECG monitor to sort of work on non-Samsung devices, but it requires a good amount of work and it's currently really buggy. The people at XDA developers have modified the Samsung Health Monitor app to work on non-Samsung devices. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna learn how to set it up and see if it's worth your time. The other app that's missing features is Bixby. And you might not care about that at first, but I just uploaded a video about how Bixby is an amazing and incredibly powerful tool on the Galaxy Watch 4. So if you think Bixby's trash, you can go check out that video by clicking the card above or the link in the description, and I'm betting you're gonna change your mind. Anyway, the specific missing Bixby feature is that there's no Bixby capsule store on non-Samsung Android devices. Simply put, capsules are plugins that increase the functionality of Bixby. If you're familiar with Amazon Alexa, Bixby capsules are equivalent to Alexa skills. Currently, you can only browse through these on a Samsung device with the Bixby capsule marketplace. And as you can see, there are a ton to choose from. Fortunately, I did find a way to get these installed on your Galaxy Watch 4, even if it's connected to a non-Samsung Android device, and it's actually really simple. As long as you know the name of the capsule you want to install, like let's say I wanted to install this copycat capsule, all I'd have to do is activate Bixby on my watch and say, ask copycat a question. And just like that, the copycat capsule was added to my Galaxy Watch 4, which is connected to my Pixel 5. And if you ever want to see which capsules you have installed on your non-Samsung Android device, all you have to do is open up the Galaxy Wearable application, tap apps, tap app settings, tap Bixby, then tap my capsules. And here you'll get a list of all the capsules you currently have installed. And unfortunately, you can't access this massive list of capsules when connected to a non-Samsung Android device. And there's way too many capsules for me to share all of these with you. As you can see, this list just keeps on going. However, if you have a friend with a Samsung device, you can ask them to let you browse through the capsules on their phone. One capsule that I do highly recommend that I talked about in detail in my Bixby review on the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic is a capsule called My Brain. And since I already covered that in great detail, I'm just gonna have a card above and a link in the description that you can click to get to that video. And that video is also time coded, so just skip ahead to the capsules section of that video. But I do highly recommend checking out the rest of it so you don't miss out on all the incredible features that Bixby has to offer. Next, I want to talk about the missing settings when paired to a non-Samsung Android device. Now to do that, we're going to take a look at the Galaxy wearable application on two different devices. So on the left, I have the Galaxy Z Fold 3, which is connected to my Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. And on the right, I have a Pixel 5, which is connected to my Galaxy Watch 4. If you jump into the settings, then into the notification settings, and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that when you're connected to a Samsung device, you get the option to sync do not disturb mode with your phone. So if I enable do not disturb mode on my watch, it'll also enable it on my phone and the same vice versa. When connected to a non-Samsung Android device, you don't get that syncing option. So no matter what, if I enable do not disturb mode on my phone, that does not affect the watch and the same vice versa. And for those of you connected to a Samsung device that don't want that synced, you can just turn the toggle off. Backing out of the notification settings and going to advanced settings, you see at the top that there's this option called bedtime mode on the Samsung device, and that's not available on the non-Samsung device. If I tap this, I get the option to sync bedtime mode between my phone and my watch. Now bedtime mode is something that's not supported on non-Samsung devices, and that's why you don't get the option to sync it. And bedtime mode is basically do not disturb mode, 
but it adds one more step by turning your phone's screen black and white. Bedtime mode on the watch does have a bit more functionality than it does for the phone. So as you can see, it turned the screen brightness almost all the way down because when you're going to sleep, there's no need for a super bright screen. And it also turns off all the wake up gestures. So turning your wrist to wake it up won't do anything. Touching the screen won't wake it up. Turning the bezel won't wake it up. The only thing that will wake the screen back up is pressing one of the two physical buttons. And this also does turn on do not disturb mode so you don't get notifications buzzing on your wrist while you're trying to sleep. And just to demonstrate what happens when you turn on good night mode when connected to a Samsung device, if I go ahead and tap that, you'll see that my Galaxy Z Fold 3 gradually turns to a black and white screen. And looking back over at the watch, you'll see that turning the bezel does not wake it up, tapping the screen doesn't wake it up, turning your wrist to wake it up won't do anything. The only thing that's gonna wake this up is pressing one of the two physical buttons. And if I jump into the settings on my phone and turn off bedtime mode, then you'll see that the color comes back to my Galaxy Z Fold 3. And now if I rotate the bezel, it'll wake the watch back up. At the bottom of the advanced features section, there's an option called remote connection. And there's a slight difference depending on if you're connected to a Samsung device or a non-Samsung Android device. The way this feature works when connected to a Samsung device is it lets you send and receive calls and messages from your watch as long as your watch is on a Wi-Fi network even if it's not connected to your phone via Bluetooth. The only limitation with this feature on a non-Samsung Android device is that you don't get the remote calling option. Fortunately, the remote messaging still works. And in case you're wondering, you don't need to manually sign into a Wi-Fi network on your watch. All the Wi-Fi networks you're connected to on your phone are automatically transferred to your watch when you set the watch up. In terms of watch faces, you're only missing one specific feature, and that has to do with the AR emoji watch face. So if I tap this on both devices, then tap customize, you'll see that the Samsung device gives me the option to create new AR emojis, and it gives you a bunch of people to start with, or you can create one that looks like yourself using the camera. On non-Samsung devices, you only get the option between this girl and this guy. And in case you're wondering what these avatars do, they have different animations depending on what's on your screen. And if you tap the screen, they'll do a new animation. So there is everything you can and can't do with the Galaxy Watch 4 or 4 Classic when connected to a non-Samsung Android device. Let me know if you think it's worth it down in the comments below. And if you guys found this video helpful and want to help me out, go ahead and drop a like down below to help me beat the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to see even more deep dive coverage of the Galaxy Watch 4, as well as my upcoming deep dive for the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and the Galaxy Z Fold 3. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.